How do you top yourself? That's kind of the situation Alienware is in right now with its two new QD OLED gaming monitors. The 34 QD OLED has been the crown jewel of gaming displays for close to two years. So if you're gonna release a new monitor, it better be a good one. Luke has a review of the 4K version, so make sure to check that out. I'm looking into the 27 inch version, which is a bit of an upgrade over the deluge of 27 inch OLED monitors we have right now. It's sporting second gen QD OLED tech, the same 1440p resolution and a stunning 360 hertz refresh rate. And it's actually coming in at a lower price. Alienware is asking $900 while the 1440p competition from LG and Asus lands at $1,000. I imagine this monitor will push down the prices of some of the 2023 models though, so is it worth it to just pick up one of those on sale? Well, let's get into it. But hold up, before I get into it, I need to ask you to like and subscribe, so please do those things. Thanks. You're probably familiar with the specs here if you watched some of my previous OLED reviews, but let's make sure everyone is on the same page. This is a 27 inch monitor with a resolution of 2560 by 1440 or 1440p, and it comes with a 360 hertz refresh rate. Alienware claims a 0.03 millisecond response time, and the display comes with a slew of certifications, including Vesa's Display HDR True Black 400, Adaptive Sync, and AMD FreeSync Premium Pro. For all of that, Alienware is asking $900, and that includes a three-year warranty that, yes, still includes burning coverage. Really, there are two big differences compared to the LG Ultra Gear OLED 27 and the ASUS ROG Swift PG27 AQDM that we saw last year. First is the 360 hertz refresh rate, which we're seeing for the first time on an OLED monitor here. Second is that this is not just straight OLED. Just like Alienware's previous display, this is a QD OLED panel. Caleb has a video on how QD OLED is different from a traditional OLED, so make sure to check that out. But the basic idea is that QD OLED should have better brightness and color because, well, they don't use a color filter. And yeah, sure enough, the color here is exceptional. I measured 100% of sRGB, of course, but also a chart topping 99% of DCI-P3. Alienware includes a ton of different presets to adjust your picture to, as well as individual color sliders. You have some room for calibration within the display itself for both HDR and SDR, and that's more than most gaming monitors can say. We need to talk about color accuracy though because that was a pain point for the 34 QD OLED. Alienware clearly did work here. I measured an average Delta E of 0.46 with my Spider X2 and the default picture profile which is the best result I've ever recorded for overall color accuracy. Overall, yes, it is great, but there's a little nuance to this conversation. Caleb took the 32 inch model into the lab and noticed the red primary came out hotter than blue and green. You can adjust the red down with the built-in tools, which is great. The big improvement here is that the red, green, and blue primaries scale across brightness levels. With the 34 QD OLED, we saw the greens and blues get out of whack past 600 nits. That's really not the case here, which is great to see. Color is great, a big thumbs up here, but what about brightness? There isn't really much new here, but that's because Alienware didn't need to change much. I measured a peak brightness of 928 nits in HDR for a 1% window. Now, naturally, that drops as the window size increases. It dropped to 837 nits for a 4% window and down to 474 nits for a 10% window. I also measured perfect black levels as you'd expect from OLED, so the contrast is infinite. The only note here, however, is that I only achieved this level of brightness with the HDR Peak 1000 mode. Alienware includes about half a dozen smart HDR presets that tweak the contrast, saturation, and color balance. You have a custom preset available too, and if you have the patience for tweaking, it's definitely the one I'd recommend. Reason being is that it was pretty hard for me to settle on one of the smart HDR presets. The default desktop mode almost looked blurry compared to the others, while the movie mode raised the black levels too much and the game mode was way too oversaturated. Desktop mode is the best balance of color and contrast in my eyes, but I definitely take the custom mode if you don't mind tweaking. I would not recommend turning off Smart HDR though, dear lord. It looks horrendous, super oversaturated, overblown highlights. Yeah, no, keep Smart HDR on, please.
All right, so that's all the nerdy bits out of the way. I'll get into gaming and all that later, but I wanna talk about the actual monitor itself. Alienware has this design absolutely nailed, and a big part of that comes down to the stand. It has a hexagonal base that barely takes up any desk space while still feeling very sturdy. Alienware also includes a routing channel for cables, so they come from the back of the monitor and slot in on the bottom of the display. Basically, it's super easy to get a clean desk set up with this monitor, which is always great to see. For inputs, you have two DisplayPort 1.4 connections, a single HDMI 2.1, Note that HDMI 2.1 caps the refresh rate at 144 hertz, a USB-B upstream port, and three USB 3.2 Gen 1 downstream ports so you can connect all your peripherals. One of those is actually right underneath the front of the monitor for quickly swapping things in and out. What's great is that most of the ports are tucked behind a removable back panel so you can always hide your connections. I love seeing that. As for the stand itself, you have 110 millimeters of height adjustment, 26 degrees of tilt, 40 degrees of swivel, and 180 degrees of pivot, though only in one direction or the other. Basically, you can turn the monitor sideways. The display also includes a 100 by 100 vase mount, so you can throw it on a monitor arm or a wall mount if you'd like. The whole package here looks great with Alienware's minimal branding and the dark side of the moon colorway. There's also the illuminated 27 and Alienware logo on the back of the display, which you can customize with different colors through the on-screen display. My main gripe are the bezels. They're almost half an inch thick, which is a definite downgrade compared to the other 27-inch OLED monitors we have. You forget about them after a while, but that was the first thing I noticed when booting up the monitor. Time to talk about the main reason you'll buy this monitor though, gaming, of course. What do you want me to say? It's amazing, we've been here before. QD OLED is plenty bright, the colors are on point, and the contrast is second to none. If you're looking for a peak HDR gaming experience, well, this is how you achieve it. Alienware does have more than just QD OLED going for it though. It's certified with VESA Adaptive Sync, so you'll get variable refresh rate regardless of what graphics card you have. But the bigger note here is the 360 hertz refresh rate. In years past, I gotta be honest, I would write off that high of a refresh rate. Like, it's great to have a high refresh rate for your Overwatches and Counter-Strikes of the world, but you're not going to get that high of a frame rate to even take advantage of it in a game like Returnal, for example. Or at the very least, you wouldn't be able to. I mean, remember, we're living in a time of upscaling and AI-generated frames in games, so a super high refresh rate makes a lot more sense now than it did even a couple years ago. Returnal is actually a great example. I booted it up on an RTX 4080 PC, and with DLSS 3 running, I was getting in the range of 280 to 290 FPS with ultra settings. Like, no, you're not always going to get that high in games, but with modern games, you can actually capitalize on a 360 hertz refresh rate outside of just those, you know, competitive esports titles. And man, does it feel responsive. With the low response times of OLED and the high refresh rate, gameplay just feels silky smooth. It makes Alienware's 500 hertz game monitor released just a few months ago look kind of silly, frankly. Now you're getting the responsiveness and clarity of an esports display while also getting those inky blacks necessary for high-end cinematic gaming. Don't discount that cinematic experience either. You know, this is still a QD OLED gaming monitor, so playing games like Alan Wake 2 and Cyberpunk 2077, you're getting the most immersive experience money can buy. The only displays that are better are other OLED monitors, such as the Odyssey OLED G9 or Alienware's own 34 QD OLED. With a high refresh rate, however, the Alienware QD OLED 27 carves out its own space in this kind of growing market of OLED options. It nails the color and contrast for cinematic HDR gaming, and it packs a speedy refresh rate that makes games look impossibly smooth. I mean, it's just excellent. I need to address the OLED bit once again though. As with any OLED panel, there is some risk of burn-in. Extended desktop use, particularly with static elements, can eventually lead to burn-in, and there's just no way around that. Alienware definitely treats burn-in much more seriously than some other display makers, though. You have a panel health status in the menu, as well as consistent reminders to run the panel saving features built into the display. Further, you have that three-year warranty that covers burn-in. Most other OLEDs only come with a one-year warranty, and some of them don't even cover burn-in. Listen, I think the practical risk of burn-in is it's a little overblown. Burn-in is possible, but this isn't some fragile piece of tech that will break if you sneeze at it. That said, I'm definitely more comfortable spending my money here than with some other brands. I actually bought a 34 QD OLED a while back, and I've been through the RMA process as an actual customer, not a reviewer. 
it works. And even the peace of mind of burn-in protection for three years is a really big deal. All right, that out of the way, on to some conclusions. This is a display with very few downsides. I mean, look, you're getting better QD OLED tech with a higher refresh rate for less money than we saw last year, and with a market-leading warranty that covers burn it. Sure, the bezels are a little too thick and you might be able to find one of last year's OLEDs on sale for a bit cheaper, but I mean, those are really the only cons I can muster. As impossible as it seemed, Alienware took what made the 34QD OLED so excellent and addressed the few pain points that display had, particularly in the refresh rate and color accuracy. It's possible some of the other OLED displays we saw at CES will win out, but I'm willing to bet on Alienware's display right now. The big question for me actually is if you should buy this one or go with the 32-inch 4K model, and thankfully, Luke has an excellent video review of that display, so make sure to go check that out. But wait, 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 don't leave me yet. Before you watch Luke's review, leave me a comment below and let me know what you think of this monitor. Is, is it better than the 2023 OLEDs we saw? Are you gonna pick one up? You know, leave me a comment. While you're down there, you might as well leave a like on this video and get subscribed. I mean, what could it hurt? All right, thanks everyone for watching. I will see you in the next video.